I have been worried about doing something for about two days and I cannot wait anymore because I am afraid it is going to go bad. I was at the seafood market and I purchased something that I don't know what it is. And I'm worried that if I don't suck it up and try it, then I am going to either A, regret it, or B, it's going to go bad and I am going to gag. Can anybody tell me what is this seafood? Name this seafood. Are you ready? Don't judge. Don't judge till you look at the coloring. What is this? It is the size of a jumbo shrimp, but it has the coloring of a lobster tail. And it is dripping in oil and herbs, which is never a bad thing. But it also looks like it may have had a head here, like a, a like look, like that doesn't look, that, that looks natural. And, the other mystery is I don't see any poop anywhere. So whatever it is, it was cleaned for me. I don't know, but I'm going to try it because I am living on the edge here in Sicily. All right, here we go. Hmm. It's fishy, but it looks like a crustacean. I don't know what this is. Seriously, I do not know what, what is this? Happy Sunday, everyone. It's Sunday in the beautiful town of Kakamo, Sicily, and I will be going to Catholic Mass with some of my neighbors who invited me to sit with them. So I'm really excited about that. I bought on Amazon before I got here the Catholic Order of a Mass in both English and Italian. So I'll be able to follow along with the Mass even though the entire thing will be in Italian. Fun fact for all you Protestants out there, did you know that a Catholic Mass, the style and the liturgy of the Mass is the same no matter where you are on earth. One of the biggest differences is the sermon or the homily, what the priest decides to preach on on that particular Sunday. But the style, the way that communion, also known as the Eucharist, is celebrated is all a part of this book. And if I were to go to the Sub-Sahara African desert, whether I'm there, whether I'm in London, whether I'm in New Jersey, whether I'm in Sicily, the order of the mass is always the same. And so I'll be able to follow along, hopefully effortlessly. I'm really excited about today. I've gotten to know my neighbors even more over the last week. And I'm realizing that these people are just fascinated by the world around them. They are embracing their lives as they know them. And they're curious about the world around them. And I really appreciate that because I am a naturally curious person. Let's see how today goes. I sat with some of my distant relatives at the uh, San Benedetto Annunciation Church of Kakamo, Sicily. It's the second largest church in the city of Kakamo. It was so wonderful, really, to sit and to worship in that church. I also had a chance to meet some of my other cousins 
who are related to a gentleman by the name of Matteo Sanfratello. Matteo did actually go to the United States, to New York, but chose to come back here to Kakamo. And he had nine children, and those children and their ancestors, many of them live in and around this town. So I had the chance to meet some of those cousins today, which is super neat, super exciting. Everyone's so excited about this. So did that, and then I was invited to a wonderful family's home for lunch, for Sunday lunch. For those of you who don't know, the Italians are big family people. So it's not just like sitting and eating with this woman and her husband. It's actually sitting and eating with their daughter, son-in-law, grandchild, her mother, them, me. And it was just interesting conversation, multiple courses, nothing is put on the same plate. She served us all. So we had uh, the pasta course first, then we had the second course, which was like veal, like sauteed in olive oil with breadcrumbs, a wonderful potato with rosemary. And then after that, we had the dolce, which was similar to a tiramisu minus the marzapone, for those of you who make tiramisu, lighter, definitely delicious. Then there was coffee. And of course there was local white wine throughout the meal, just wonderful. One of the things that I love about the Italian people is that they are not dismissive of their children, even when the children are inconvenient. This couple has a two and a half year old son and naturally the kid is into everything, interrupts, excited about the cars, dragging little cars all over the table and nobody is aggravated with this child. They just incorporate him into the conversation or they stop talking, they go to the kid, they talk to the kid, and then they go back. Very normal, very non-dismissive of the child and what the child needed. Coming from an American perspective where we get kind of aggravated with kids when they interrupt or they're inconvenient, especially at that age, two and a half years old, I mean, really. I just really found it refreshing that they just kind of rolled with the punches and they expected their guests to roll with them too. And that was really, really neat. I don't know if I made any cultural faux pas. If I did, they were gracious. I was having a hard time knowing when I was supposed to leave because Italians are notorious for like saying they're leaving, then not leaving, and then I'm, I'm by myself. So I'm not taking cues off of another foreigner to know like, okay, now's the time or this is the time. So I'm kind of winging it myself. It was an honor to be in someone's home. Just the warmth and the hospitality and the conversation. Really, really great conversations about immigration, about the history of Italy, about the future of the town. It was just a lovely, lovely afternoon. I've spoken with a lot of expats here, people from Canada, Great Britain, America. The expats really don't have the opportunity to really connect in the way that I'm connecting with them because I am a cousin to these people. So I'm welcome like family, whereas they are outsiders moving in and they are viewed as guests. So I, I've talked to multiple people who you know, haven't had dinner in someone's house or haven't been invited for drinks or, you know, haven't invited their neighbors in for coffee. It's just a little bit different when they're not connected in any way to the town or the people in it. Here I'm having this immersive experience where I can dine with people from my own country or other countries who speak English, but then I'm also having these great opportunities to connect with the locals. On a local level, I'm being viewed as one of them who was lost or one of them who is just coming back. I really do get why Italian Americans feel disconnected. We've created this subculture that we think is actually Italian. It's really not. I mean, this place is not frozen in time. They are not crushing grapes with their feet to make wine. Things are mechanical here. The agriculture is done in modern ways. Technology is here. People have cell phones. This is not a frozen in time people. When your immigrant family member left Southern Italy and took a boat to New York Harbor. Time continued, people evolved, people died, people were having babies. And here we are today, 100, maybe 125 years later, and time is marching on. Yes, it's an old world country, 
Yes, there are elements of history and antiquity that we can only dream about, but the people have moved on. The people have real world issues in modern day society that we have anywhere else on the planet. I think that that has been a surprise to me because I have been fed the old time stories of my family and my history. And that's different than what is today in modern times. So I had a quick addiction. I've been here over two weeks. I have never been addicted to coffee the way that I have been this last two weeks. I think part of it was the jet lag to start and then it was the excitement of being here. And then it was all the things I have to do to get used to just living in my little Sicilian townhouse. And, you know, I just kind of got hooked I got hooked on the coffee. Here in Sicily, people drink espresso predominantly. Little tiny cup, little tiny amounts of pops of caffeine. I did not realize how much I was really drinking. Two days ago, I realized that I was drinking a whole, what's called a maca pot of coffee. Well, it's probably the equivalent of like three espressos, which I've always been, you know, I have to be careful with my caffeine intake. Well, let me tell you, Two days ago, I was coming off of the caffeine high and I had a throbbing headache. And I was like, this is crazy. I'm not gonna get hooked on coffee. I'm here for months, I'm not doing this. So this morning I said, I'm gonna be the bigger man. I'm not having coffee. So I had a cup of herbal tea. Well, boy, did I feel it a hot three hours later. I was dragging, literally like trying to keep my eyes open. It was like jet lag all over again, but it wasn't jet lag. It was just me not having my caffeine fixation. I think I'm going to have to have a cup tomorrow just to kind of like wean myself off. Try not to do it cold turkey because the headache today and the draggy today and yeah, it's just not great. Just not great, guys. Don't do it. Don't do it. So that is my coffee story, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna wean myself off. I'm gonna be the bigger man, so.